In this video, we're going to use the slope deflection equations to solve a problem that involves a sway frame. So in the diagram, we have a frame structure, just a single bay, A, B, C, D. The bay is of width 6 meters and of height 4 meters. And at the top left corner, B, we've applied a 10 kilonewton point load. The first thing that I like to do with these structures is to identify the degrees of freedom and also do a qualitative analysis of what I expect the bending moment to look like when I get to the end of the procedure. So we're just drawing what the deflected shape looks like and then drawing the bending moment diagram. So as a result of applying the point load, the whole frame will sway to the right of an amount delta. And the, the amount delta is the same on both sides. So at the original, so B moves by an amount delta to this position and C also moves from its original position in a horizontal direction by an amount delta. As well as the sway to the side, we've caused bending in the columns, double curvature type bending in the columns and double curvature bending in the beam section, which brings about rotation at the top corners, B and C, of theta B and theta C. For now, we're going to presume that theta B and theta C are of different values. And we'll see later whether that is the case or whether they're exactly the same value. So now we're going to do a qualitative analysis to understand what our bending moment diagram is supposed to look like. And what we can do is identify that at A we have no translation and no rotation. At D, the same situation, no translation, no rotation. And as we've drawn on the other diagram, um, and as a result of this, we identify, and I'll go back to the better drawn diagram on the left hand side, we identify that we have tension on the left hand side of the columns at the bottom, and it transfers to tension on the right hand side of the columns. And in the beam section, we begin with tension on the underneath side of B, and we go for a point of inflection and get tension over the top of the beam at C. So combining this information together, along with the fact that there is no loading in the spans, we can have a good stab at our bending moment diagram. So a tension on the left-hand side Go into tension on the right hand side, same on the other column. And the bending moment goes round the corner at C, but through the corner at B. And this is the shape of our bending moment diagram, which is useful for checking later. The next step in the procedure after we've identified the dots, which is delta, theta b, theta c, is to write down our fixed end moment. And our fixed end moments were a function of the length of any members and the loading applied to those members. And in this case, the 10 kilonewton load is applied at the corner at B so it isn't applied to any individual member we wouldn't consider it to be on AB or on BC so for all three of the members AB BC and CD there is no externally applied loading and therefore all the fixed end moments equals zero okay next thing we can do is move on to our member end moment using the slope deflection equations. And 
reminding ourselves the formula for the slope deflection equations, we have the moment at the near end is equal to 2EI divided by L into 2 times theta at the near end plus theta at the far end minus 3 delta upon L plus the fixed end moment at the near end. And as you might gather, one of the things that's going to happen differently in sway frames and no sway frames is that the terms, the free delta upon L, where delta upon L is the chord rotation of a member, now becomes into play. So let's move on to writing down our specific member end moments. So M A B is equal to 2 E I over the length of A B, which is 4. Then we have 2 times theta near, which is theta A, plus theta B minus 3 delta upon L, which is 4. Plus for completeness, the fixed end moment. A, B. So if we look at this statement quickly, we can see that the fixed end moment goes out of there. And theta A has to be equal to zero as there's no rotation at A. So if we tidy this up, we get E, I upon 2 into theta B minus 3 delta upon 4. And we could tidy up further, but it's fine in this state. Okay, and similarly, we do similar for MBA equals EI upon 2. 2 times theta B minus 3 delta upon L, which is 4 meters. We move on to the... Uh, being going across the top, BC, so MBC is equal to 2EI divided by L, which is 6 metres. And we have 2 theta B plus theta C at the far end. And then we have the delta upon L term. And we have to remind ourselves, going back to the original diagram, but the delta term is causing bending in the columns, but it's not directly causing the bending in the beam. So the delta here is all horizontal. It's not transverse to the beam. It's not causing a chord rotation. So the, so the minus three delta upon L is a minus zero in this case. Then we move on to MCB, which is equal to E I upon 3 and 2 theta C plus theta B and finally we can move on to column C D and M C D equals E I upon 2 2 theta C minus 3 upon 4 delta, so free, free delta upon L, where L equals 4. And finally, MDC is equal to EI upon 2 theta C minus free delta upon L, which is 4. So with that, we've written down equations for all of our member end moments. And now what we'd wish to do is write some equilibrium equations so that we can solve for our unknowns theta b, theta c and delta. So solve for delta, theta b, theta c and what we need to do is establish equilibrium Equilibrium 
equations. So like we've done for sway frames previously, we examined the equilibrium of joint B. So, and we have that MBA plus MBC equals zero for equilibrium. And we can substitute our member n moment equations for MBA and MBC to get that zero equals EI into brackets theta B minus three apes of delta plus so four six theta B plus one third theta C. And we can collect all of the like terms together. So we've got theta B's, theta B's, theta C's and deltas and eliminate EI if we wanted to. So let's do that. So we get five over three theta B plus one third theta C minus three apes of delta. We're going to do exactly the same. Let's number this equation number one. And we're going to have a look at the equilibrium of joint C. So we have zero equals MCB plus MCD. And again, substituting for MCB, MCD, eliminating EI and collecting like terms, we get we one third zero equals one third theta B plus five thirds theta C minus three apes of delta. And I'm gonna label this equation two. So at this stage, we have two equations of an equilibrium, but three unknowns. But what we can do is by rearranging equation number one, we can get three delta upon eight equals five thirds theta B plus one third theta C and from equation two, we also get for three delta upon eight is equal to one third of theta B plus five thirds theta C. And we can solve, take one equation from the other and we, we eliminate the delta terms and eventually arrive with a bit of rearranging that theta B equals theta C, which equals three delta upon 16. And double underline this because we're gonna need this result later. But unfortunately, at this stage, we've exhausted our two equations of equilibrium and solved for theta B and theta C but we don't have a further equation of equilibrium in order to solve for the delta term. So what we need to do is find another equation of equilibrium, and we can do this. So what we're going to do is have a look at the equilibrium of the columns, and draw free body diagrams of the columns, and generate from those free body diagrams extra equations of equilibrium, and I'll demonstrate this. So, the free body diagram of A and B. So we have a column A and B. And I'm just gonna put, so we have a moment, and I'm just gonna put both of these on clockwise. I don't know the real directions of these, but this is MAB and MBA. We'll also have some shear forces. 
So I'm going to call this V A B and V B A. And finally, for the complete the free body diagram, we have the height of four meters. And similarly, we have a free body diagram for the other column CD. So let's draw that. So, and again, just presume clockwise moments. So M, D, C, and M, C, D. And presume positive in the X direction shear forces, V, C, D, or V, D, C, and finally, so that is four meters, this is C, this is D. So having a look at column AB, and we're gonna take moments about point B. If we take a moment about point B, VBA disappears. So we can write taking moments about B, so we get and keep it on the screen at the same time. M B A plus M A B minus four, so the the height the lever arm times V A B must be equal to zero. And now we can substitute into this the expressions we have for M B A and M A B. So we get from there that zero equals E I upon two. Then we get V to B minus three delta upon four plus E I upon two, two theta B minus three delta upon four minus four times V A B. And we can tidy that up, a bit of rearranging to get that V A B equals E I upon eight into three theta B minus three delta upon two. Okay, and then from here we know that theta b was equal to 3 delta upon 16 and we're going to substitute that into our equation there and this gets us then that v a b equals e i delta into 15 upon 128 and there's a minus sign indicating that our presumed direction for VAB was incorrect and is actually pointing to the left. Okay. So we do exactly the same procedure. We're going to take moments at C using this free body diagram of CD and let's go through that. So we have taking moments about C but zero equals MCD plus MDC minus four times VDC and substitute for MCD and MDC from the expressions we derived earlier and with a bit of tidying up we can get to VDC equals E I times delta to minus 15 upon 128. And again, the minus sign meaning that it's pointing to the left. With these shear forces decided, we can actually set up now an equation of equilibrium for the entire frame. So free body diagram of the entire frame. 
Let's draw that very quickly. That's good enough. Uh, so then we had V A B or the reaction at this at A. The horizontal reaction at D, but let's still call it the, which is also the shear force V D C and the applied load of ten kilonewtons and from there we can establish an equation of equilibrium so if we take the sum of the forces in the x direction we have that 10 minus 15 upon 128 ei delta so the vab minus 50 15 upon 128 EI delta is equal to zero to be in equilibrium. We can rearrange this equation and finally gets us that delta equals 128 upon 3 EI. And at this point, We've already established what phi to B and phi to C were. So we have completely solved for all of the unknown displacements and rotations in the problem. And what we can do at this point is substitute for phi to B, phi to C and delta into the member end moment expressions. So scrolling way, way, way up the page. If you're on a note paper, you're probably three or four pages back. So all the way back to these expressions for MAB, MBA, MBC, MCB, etc. And we substitute back into those expressions our now known rotations and delta. And we get that MAB equals minus 12 kilonewton meters. M B A equals minus eight kilonewton meters. M B C equals eight kilonewton meters, so equal and opposite. M C B equals eight kilonewton meters and MCB equals minus 8 kilonewton meters as expected equal and opposite and finally we complete it with MCD equals minus 12 kilonewton meters and with those values we can finally draw our bending moment diagram so drawing the original frame and instead of having to worry about what is minus, what is plus, I can use the intuitively derived shape of the bending moment diagram from the qualitative analysis to help me draw which side the bending moment diagram should go on. And I draw my bending moment diagrams always on the tension side of any members. So I have a value of 12 kilonewton meters here and a value of eight kilonewton meters here. This is also the eight kilonewton meters. Drawing a straight line because there is no applied loading on any of these sections. So this is also a value of eight. This is a value of eight. The moment comes around the corner to a value of eight for equilibrium and goes down to a value of 12 and at this point we know all of the displacements and we've drawn the bending moment 
diagram in kilonewton meters. And what you might want to do is declare what your sign convention is so if someone reading your bending moment diagram knows, then I'm just going to say to, off to the side, and this is normally enough, the bending moment on tension slide. Thank you.